It is May on the Oregon coast. Rain clouds hang heavy in the sky, waiting to unload on the open ocean. As the tide goes out, pools of salt water become trapped in the rocks, and a diverse ecosystem suddenly appears. The aquatic organisms living in the tide pools must deal with a constantly changing environment. The College of Idaho's Diversity of Life class is exploring the adaptations that allow these organisms to survive such extreme changes here in the Oregon coast tide pools. The giant green sea anemone is a common inhabitant of the tide pools. Its short tentacles surround an oral disc giving it the appearance of a flower, but has no relation to one. In fact, sea anemones are cnidarians, a group that includes jellyfish and corals. During low tide, the sea anemone closes up to prevent water loss and waits for the water level to rise again. Another common organism found amongst the rocks is algae, like this rockweed. Although not the most charismatic organism in the tide pools, algae, along with other plants, are important food sources for purple sea urchins. A close relative to the sea urchin is the purple sea star. Both organisms have a water vascular system that is unique to echinoderms. In the sea star, water flows in and out of a structure called madreporite. Pressure is created by water flowing through the canals of the water vascular system. Water also passes through structures called tube feet, which have suction cups on the ends. The pressure creates suction, and as a muscle contracts, the sea star is pulled forward on its tube feet. This movement is important while hunting. It feeds on various mollusks, including mussels and clams, by ejecting its stomach into the prey's shell. If it successfully opens the shell, the stomach begins to digest the prey's soft tissues. These shells are the only protection that California mussels have against the sea star. The shells keep predators out while sealing moisture in, an important adaptation during low tide. Acorn barnacles are crustaceans that can be found growing among mussels in the tide pools. They attach to rocks by secreting a cement-like substance. Specialized appendages called cirri are used to catch prey. The feathery cirri beat in and out to draw plankton into the shell for digestion. Another crustacean hiding among the rocks is the crab. Although most crabs can survive long periods of time out of the water, the threat of land predators is great, as this Dungeness crab discovered. Hermit crabs do not secrete a shell, so they must find an empty gastropod shell to live in for protection. Nudibranchs, or sea slugs, are gastropods that have lost their shell during evolution. Instead of a shell, they have developed another form of protection. Most are poisonous and give fair warning to predators by displaying bright colors. The loss of a shell limits them to an aquatic habitat, so they must find a pool to wait for the incoming tide. One species of mammals can usually be spotted lounging near the tide pools. The temperature change does not impact these gray harbor seals since they are endotherms and keep a constant internal temperature. Rather, they choose to be resting on the rocks after a hard morning of fishing. Their streamlined bodies are well adapted for swimming, but they are not so graceful when out of the water. Fluctuations in temperature, salinity, and oxygen are only a few of the factors that organisms in the Oregon coast tide pools contend with. As the diversity of life class discovered, the constantly changing environment has created adaptations as unique 
as the ecosystem itself.